The rain has been pouring. So of course I turned on this. It was gonna try and show it off. You just hear it, just you know, sound like the world was coming down because it was so loud. But and I see a plane randomly. Anyway, but uh, because you know that's that's clearly on subject. But it uh, it's been pouring rain and it's so nice because the fact that I love the rain is just the best weather ever. I swear, other than of course snow. Sure. Anyway, um, being Pacific Northwestern, no. but the fact the yeah the fact that it's uh it, it's traditional Pacific Northwest weather, you know that we here in Oregon and especially in Northwest Oregon, you know we're used to it. We're supposed to average forty five and a half inches of rain a year, and this is what we famously are known for, you know, stereotypically is pouring rain, specifically this time of year, you know, around the time of preseason and then the official starting season of NBA basketball, you know, everybody's just like, it's going to pour rain on opening night for the Blazers. It always does. And it, you know, it always did up until about, I want to say 2009 or somewhere between 2008 and 2010. I want to say 2009. That's when it never happened. It, like it, you keep saying every year, it's like, it's going to happen. No, it doesn't happen. Did it happen? It didn't happen. Did it happen? No, it still hasn't happened. It's so annoying, but it's just like, we've been in such a painful drought since 2008 that, you know, we haven't had really any rain and, you know, have supposed to be averaging 45 and a half inches of rain a year. Instead, we've I'm 100% confident we haven't even broken 20 inches since 2008. There's no possible way. If we touched 10 inches, I'd be in absolute shock. But I'm 99.9% .9 sure we haven't even since 2008 touched that much in the Portland Metro. And if any of the models supposedly show that's the case, I'm sure they're effed up because there's no way. You know, at best we've had since then is like sprinkles and maybe a random pouring rain, you know, for at most... 45 minutes, and then next thing you know, it's it sprinkles every so often, you know. It's like, where's our rain? Where's our cold weather? Where's our storms? Well, this is supposed to be a leftover front that was supposed to come in last night. No, no, it's coming in tonight. Uh, the remains of the one of the typhoons, no, it's hurricane, in uh, the Pacific. For some stupid reason, because it's in the Pacific, they don't think they can call it a hurricane. They have to call it a typhoon. Why not just call it a random swirly thing? And call it good. <laughs> no. Anyway, a crying, swirling ball of fluids. Sounds bad, but that's technically what it is. Maybe not a ball, but it, you know, you know. yeah. But it, you know, it's nice. And so I just have my window halfway open to as far as it can possibly be. It's probably open about a foot and a half uh, while it was downpouring, and I still have it wide open because the fact it's just like. <laughs> Green. Oh god, it makes me so happy to finally have it and actually have it in a true downpour situation to where it just like everything is super dark and it's actually really windy and breezy and occasionally the rain goes from just raining or just showering to absolutely just pouring down cats and dogs and hammers and hammer, you know, pitchforks and hammer handles, whatever your term is, it's just like, holy crap, you know, it's like throwing boulders down at you. It's just pouring so hard. Ah, uh, that's so nice. Too bad I couldn't show you, specifically by hearing the, uh, rain. This is what I was going to try and do. But, oh, that's so nice. To finally have the Pacific Northwest back. Even if it's just the tail end of a storm, at least it's nice to have it. Because we haven't had it in years. And I hope it stays for a very long time and we just hopefully have a traditional fall and winter the traditional fall and winter for the certain west and around here that'd be amazing except you know traditional winter plus actually get some snow that amounts to something and sticks that would that'd be nice uh, anyway but uh yeah Share my happiness is basically what I'm doing, and that's kind of what I was going to do. God, it makes me giddy. Go get giddy. So I love it. Just listening to that. It 
it literally hits me right here, you know, right in the heart, because it's like, it's, mm, it's so nice. Anyway. Hey, it's a Pacific Northwest thing, you know, it's like hugging trees. You joke about it, and like what it is, you probably have done it at least once in your life. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's such a pretty sight, you know, everybody's like, it's so dreary and boring, it's, you know, gray, it's a horrible day. Like, around here it's like, no, it's fantastic. Give me more, please. It's beautiful. <laughs> and there's so many people that actually today on Twitter, I was retweeting them just because of the fact that they were from here, and they're just like, oh, it's, but at least, you know, they're having a bad day, right? And so they're like, or it's a really long day for them. They're getting a little bit annoyed, you know, it's like, they're just, they're being completely, 100% wholeheartedly serious, you know, and they're clearly typing it because they don't think that anybody's going to, you know, call them out for it, like, what's wrong with you, you know, or if you're joking, it's like, no. They're dead serious, the fact that it's like, at least it's beautiful today, it's beautiful weather. This is what it's been like, off and on, it's just been having downpours and raining and cloudy and stormy a little bit, and windy, it's nice. But I like a real storm, one that lasts a long time, that'd be nice. But if you know, get to blow out your house and your windows and everything else with it, you know, that'd be super nice. Good day, or good night to be at the coast, for sure. Coast, or what most people, especially East Coast, call beach. We call it coast. But, you know. Want to go down to the beach? No, we call it, let's go down to the coast. <laughs> Regionally specific, so even in countries. 100%. This is actually a very good country for that, same with Britain. But, you anyway. I haven't heard that sound. It's like it, it resonates so strongly with me because the fact that the traffic going through all the rain and seeing this and all this, it's like it takes me back to when I was a kid and I would drive, I would ride with my dad, or whatever, in the van. And normally, what would be playing, so you'd be playing, uh, like specifically to stick with me, is Spyro Gyra on the car. And I'd be playing really loud, and so many of Spyro Gyra's. Uh, is, you know, real jazz, but so much of it has uh, stuck with me just because it stuck with this weather in me, too. You know, it's just like, it, it was perfect. You know, the darkest of nights, you know, anywhere between 7 o'clock, which would feel like 10, or 10 o'clock and it would feel like 7, you know? It's just like, something like that, you know, you'd be out in the van and you'd just, you'd hear the traffic, you'd see it against the rain, you'd see and hear the rain, you'd have all the wetness, and it's just like, Oh, it's perfect, and the music matched perfectly. It was perfect for, uh, absolutely impeccable for driving, especially aimlessly, in this kind of, uh, situation. It's so nice. It takes me back to when I was a little kid. I mean, I, God, I miss that so much. Um, even when I was uh, early and mid-teens, actually. And I miss those days a lot, just simply randomly riding in a car, wherever, just because I had this experience, you know? It was nice. So it resonates really deeply with me. I just love it so much. It's such a happy feeling for me. But anyway, I don't know why. I just felt like I had to share my happiness with you guys. And share the fact we finally have rain, I'm <laughs> kidding. It's like popping out of my skin. It makes me so happy. But yeah, I'm just casually watching a uh, NBA 2K16 NBA 2K16 uh, game I had where I was was a team I had, it was the Sixers, I had moved them to Seattle, and it was, I want to say the ninth game of our season? Yeah, it was. And we were trying to go 9-0, and and stop the Thunder from going 9-0. and And, uh, we did it. I had to sim it to the end, though, because the fact that I, I wanted to get it before it stopped pouring, and it stopped pouring. But, uh, I keep looking over at this viewfinder, not this time because of the fact, you know, you see yourself and you're kind of like, oh, that's that's where the camera is, no, it's over here. But it's because of the fact that I'm like, I'm noticing just like my neck looks like it's like this, big around. It's like so, you know, so puny. It's like super skinny. Hello. It's like, why do I look like so skinny? It looks like I'm like anorexically, you know, small in my neck and, ugh. I can actually grab myself around my hole in my neck. In fact, I can grab more than... Well, yeah, just slightly more than half my whole neck with one of my hands, just because of the fact that I have eight by, eight by nine hands. Mitts. And I still can't grip a damn basketball. I can't grip anything. And I have these eight by nine hands. <laughs> Apparently, in the NBA, are considered huge. 
Oh, that's frustrating. I can't figure out why I can't palm a damn ball. As soon as I palm it, like, it's you. Fuck. <laughs> a different story, though. Story time! <laughs> I'm a nut, I swear. I'm such a nutcase. I love it, though. Uh. Alright. I guess that'll end it, but... Rain, God, I love it so much. There's gonna be endless amounts of people who are just like, that, you know, I hope that see this, just like tons of people, at least a few hundred, because the fact, I know that won't happen, but if it does, I'll be happy and really shocked. But I'll be happy because the fact, I know that like 99.9, not 100% .9, of the comments are gonna be like, you're one f up fool, I'm like, yeah, sure am. <laughs> you keep saying that, don't ever come to the North Coast, especially not my home. There's too many people immigrating here to, you know, other people from here in the United States are moving from New York or Miami or LA and effing up the whole place. You know? It's actually statistical and a little fact too. They're actually literally effing it up. Like crime rate just suddenly went see once people move from LA, Miami, and New York City. What's the common denominator that points out those facts? Every time these crimes happen, especially, you know, crimes that aren't traffic tickets. Specifically traffic tickets like running a red light, because we have effed up traffic systems here. Like our our lights are really effed up, you know. And that's never not a complaint, especially in Beaverton. It's just not a complaint that you will not hear constantly. And another thing is that watching out of sheriffs and then even Beaverton police, they don't like to calibrate their speeding, you know, their speed guns. And so take it to court and you're pretty much guaranteed to get it annulled. But you know, that's like the most you get, maybe on a random, you know, occasional DUI somebody would get. Um, but it wasn't like reckless and dangerous or anything, because people are still pretty careful, so they can be around here and really nice and all that stuff. But, influx, suddenly, the common denominator was, you know, ID checks and everything. And all the uh, bad things are happening, like murders suddenly started happening. Armed home invasions, home invasions, robberies, everything else. It's like, what the hell just happened? And everybody suddenly realized, it's like, wait, everybody's starting, there's tons of people starting to move in at the same time this started happening, it's like everybody realized there's a common denominator. There's been a bunch of people that suddenly decided they need to move in. Like this trend, you know, people that suddenly decided they need to move here from Portland Metro, from New York City, from Miami, from Chicago, from Seattle, from LA, from Dallas. And it turned out that the common denominator was, and it still is, all these crimes that are above that and their crime rate skyrocket is in direct correlation with people from specifically moved from New York City, Miami, LA. In order, LA, New York City, Miami is the ones that they keep finding. So all the shootings, all the murders, all these other things um, that were happening. I'm not saying, you know, the, the UCC one is associated with that, but it's like the statistical and analytical facts constantly get matched to these three cities and these people moved here. So it's like they all effed up our state, you know, and suddenly we're getting, growing really high in populace, and it's like, STOP IT! <laughs> I like the fact that our state is rural, other than Portland Metro, it's like, super rural, you know? Medford, Bend, and that's really it, you know? Portland Metro, Medford, Bend. Technically, I'm considering Redmond as a part of Bend, in terms of that, and that's Ashland and all that, but, as a part of Medford, but it's just like, and then everything else is just super spread out, and there's not many people in even the more condensed areas like Pendleton, Baker City, or Klamath Falls, or whatever else, you know. And now suddenly there's a bunch of people suddenly moving in, suddenly all these different areas are suddenly growing, and there's little places that are little teeny townships that suddenly really want to grow, and those people said, what the heck, we'll help them out, and we'll move from those places to there, and it's like, Why are you doing this to my state? Why are you doing this to my home? There's too many people. If now, please. All right. <laughs> I want to be my little introvert and have everybody be a hermit. Thank you. Uh, actually, I wouldn't be that. <laughs> I would not. Anyway. Uh, rusty nut bolt and screw. With an insane asylum problem. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. But I guess that's the end of this. I, I'd, I'd do it. And then they turned into a random uh, analytical fact show, I guess. But, yeah. but anyway, yeah. I'm just pointing out, I was like, these people are, always think that the rest of the people from Oregon are super nuts, you know, because the fact they love rain. They want the rain. 
they encourage snow, and then a lot of, not a lot of people, but a handful of people, probably the biggest handful you find anywhere in any community, uh, maybe even the world, but probably not, probably just at least in the United States or North America, you'll find going out in 50 degree rainy weather without a coat, maybe at most like a sweat jacket, and they'll be out there in shorts and a sweat jacket, getting soaked. And they'll have a big smile on their face and be laughing their head off because they're thoroughly enjoying themselves getting soaked and all that stuff. And they not they're not cold, or if they are, they don't really care. You know, it's, it's really cool to be around people like that. And, you know, I mean, I normally I go out and whether that's you know on a normal day once I'm actually reacclimated <laughs> back to uh, this kind of stuff. You know, it's it's gonna be easy for me to go out in low fifties, even upper forties weather, and at at most with a sweat jacket on. And if that, normally I'll go out in this kind of weather in shorts and a t-shirt, which is exactly what I'm in. That's like all I ever wear, you know, in flip-flops. I've gone out, back last year we had snow and it did stick. It was a dusting, but it was enough to mess around in. And I went out in flip-flops, shorts, and a t-shirt. And it lasted about 25 minutes and then I finally decided, you know what, for the heck of it, for at least health-wise, I'm going to put on my sweat jacket. Ten minutes later, I put on socks, inside out socks, over my flip-flops, not because I wanted to get warm, but because I wanted free contraction. And man, that worked brilliantly. But anyway, uh, yeah, remember that. If you ever want uh, extra traction with flip-flops, and it, it, it adds just a random, you know, little bit of insulation that might just be exactly what you need. Putting your socks inside out, not right side out, inside out, over your flip-flops and foot actually gives you a lot of traction and helps a lot. Go figure. Anyway, yeah. But that's just, that's what I do. And I'm not disturbed by it at all. I can get slightly cold in that weather. You know, it was like 30 degrees with like 25 uh, degree wind chill. It didn't bother me. <laughs> it was maybe at most slightly chilled, but it was like, you know, let's see what bothers you. <laughs> I went to Chipotle once on a day where it was like 35, or evening actually, probably about the same, that was like 35 degrees, Blazers of the Game was on, <laughs> listening to it, me and my dad, and uh, we went to Chipotle, uh, across from Cedar Hills Crossing, which is formerly known as Beaverton Mall, and uh, I'm in shorts and t-shirt and flip-flops, and it's 35 degrees, 34, 35, roughly, wind chill is probably about 30, and it's coming down hard, but it's a perfect 50-50 mix of snow, sleet, and rain. And I go in there and everybody's like eyes just gravitate straight at me. And then this guy in the very back, because I'm about to go to the bathroom now, so I'm passing by, um, and uh, he stops me and he goes, you're not cold. I'm like, no. Not at all, actually. I'm very comfortable. It's not, not even out there. No. It's perfect. I know it's, you know, mix and it's like 34 degrees, but it, it's perfectly comfortable. <laughs> like, you belong in Alaska, and I'm like, yeah, they say that. <laughs> Makes me happy. <laughs> I actually wouldn't mind being in Alaska, actually, that'd be kind of nice. I'd like to live up there. But, uh, I don't know. But it's just, it's so fun to get those reactions, at least, you know, people going, hmm? It's like, you're an effed up trucker. <laughs> yeah, I am. I love it, too. No, you forget it. <laughs> no, okay. <It's> just... <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, that'll end it, though. So. Rain! Getting us in the sanity. There we go. And, uh, just derpiness, stupidness, for no specific reason going up on the channel, because why in the hell not? And... I want to say 240, 240 or 360p, because I'm doing this on Windows Movie Maker, and it refuses to ever acknowledge that my webcam is fully capable of 720. But then when I record it in 720 on my video pad, it's not actually 720. It's actually incredibly pixelated. There's like these giant pixels in place. I mean, it's kind of looks like a. It looks like a. Uh, uh, what is it? You know when uh, you have the, uh, you can 
burn a Blu-ray or something in a, uh, you know, video files or something in a 480. It's a 480p, uh, you know, actual video, but it'll burn it in 720, so to speak. And what it is, it's, it's a digital upgrade where it tries to upgrade it, but it's not actually that. I mean, it's upgraded to that. But formattedly, and how the video actually is, it's actually 480. So it's more like a really effed up 640, I guess, P in that sense. And then there's VCRs and DVD players that will automatically uh, register, you know, your DVDs, your VHSs as what they would really are, which is 480, standard definition. And they'd port it up to uh, 720. Again, 720, so to speak. But it's, again, it's like effed up 640. Um, but that's essentially what VideoPad seems to do. And I'm not sure why. But I, I don't know. But it's, it's either the webcam or it's just every program I ever use is effing it up. I don't know. <laughs> 720. In this case, somewhere between 240 and 480. But, you know. So, story time is officially over for your children. Have fun, don't get too feisty, I'll have to ground you. Or if your dog will have to stick your nose in the corner and uh, you can lick the wall. Thank you. <laughs> your parents might kill you if you try that, so don't, don't tell them I give you that idea. I wasn't actually saying that, I was just saying. <clears throat> Toodles with poodles and noodles and noodles. <laughs> Prayer for insane. <laughs>